this video, I'm going to show you how to create a responsive photo gallery without media queries. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm going to show you how to create this responsive photo gallery without any media queries. So to begin, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML section, I have a head tag with a link to a font, and then beneath that I have the body tag. And then within the body tag, I have a div class of container. So this is the container that is holding all of the images. These images are abstract images that I took from Unsplash. I have about 18 images listed here. So as we can see, the images are visible in the document. I am going to apply some styling within CSS to make this a responsive photo gallery. So first within the CSS, I'm going to write a variable and this will be for the radius in the project. And then I'm going to set some universal styling. So first I'm going to set the box sizing to border box and then set the margin and padding to zero. Next, I'm going to apply certain styling for the actual container. So again, if I reference my code, I have a div class of container, and this holds all of the images in the document. So within here, first, I'm going to set the display set to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And then with this grid, I'm going to set a certain size for each column and row. So that way we can actually see the grid visible on the page. So I'm going to write grid template columns. And initially I'll just write one FR and then one FR, which will essentially create two columns that are each one FR in size. So now we can see the elements are placed side by side. Now, in order to make this responsive, instead, I'm going to remove this and write repeat auto fit and then set a particular value. So first, I'll just set it to 10 REM. So this is basically saying auto fit as many columns as possible on the page and each one is set to 10 REM. So as I increase the size of this window, it continues to create more columns. Now we definitely have an image overlap issue and that's because each image is so large that it exceeds the 10 REM in size. But now, as you can see, as I increase or decrease the window size, the number of columns changes on the page. So to help the images look a little bit better, first I'm going to apply certain styling for the actual images. So I'm going to reference the image tag and I'm going to set the object fit to cover and then I'm going to set the height and width to 100%. So now the images look a little bit better. And beneath that, I'm going to reference the divs. So I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. So that way, if the image is too large, it will just get cut off. And then I'm also going to add the border radius that I declared earlier. So now we can see the images more clearly. So now as I increase or decrease the size, I think it becomes a little bit clearer that we're actually adding more columns onto the page. Now, although I do like this configuration, I kind of want it to look like the images are all different sizes and I want them to pop into place when there's enough room. So I want to apply a different styling to this page. So again, up here in the container, I have a display set to grid, and then I have the grid template column set to auto fit with a fixed size of 10 REM. So to add a little bit more variance to the page, instead of having it set to 10 REM and hard code it, I'm going to set it to a min max, and I want the minimum value to be six REM and the max value to be one FR. So this is basically saying that the column size can be anywhere between 6 REM and 1 FR. If there's enough room on the page to add an extra column, then reduce the size of everything to be 6 REM to make room for that new column. 
So now as I increase or decrease, you can see that the actual image sizes grow as the screen size grows. And as soon as there is enough room to add another column, it does. So this is looking pretty good so far, but I actually want the rows to be a little bit more uniform in the project. So right now, each row is a different size, and that's dependent on the size of the images in the actual row. But instead, I want each row to be a fixed size, so that way they're always the same size, regardless of the images that are actually in that row. So then I'm going to add grid auto rows and set that to 6 REM. So in that way, the grid will add new rows if it needs to, but it will always be 6 REM. So now as I increase or decrease the size, again, each row is the same size. Next, I just want to add a little bit of a gap between each image, so I'm going to add a grid gap, and it will be 0.5 REM. So now there is a bit of breathing room between each element. And I'm also going to set the margin here to 1 REM. So this is looking really good so far, but I want to add some variation to the page so each image is not the exact same size as the next one. So in order to do that, I'm going to apply certain properties for the grid row and for the grid column. So beneath this div tag, I'm going to write div again, but here I'm going to reference the nth child. Now there are multiple ways that you can reference the nth child. You can use even odd, you can use an exact number, but instead I'm going to put in a math equation that will determine which child receives this certain effect. So I'm going to write 5n, which means that every fifth child I want it to have this styling. So I'm going to set the grid row to span 3 and the grid column to span 2 which basically means for these particular divs, I want their rows to span three of them and I want the columns to span two. So in that way, we achieve this different effect where here, this image takes up two columns and three rows. To vary the design a little bit more, I'm going to follow a similar procedure, but instead of having the nth child to the fifth item, instead I'm going to put the fifth item plus one, which will then be the sixth item and so on. So in that way, these other children will have a different effect. So here I'll just set the grid row to span to. And then I'm going to repeat this effect several times. So now as I look through the design, each image is a different dimension. So this is going to help us create that really cool gallery look. Now an issue that we have right away is that it follows the numerical order of the items in the HTML. So this is the first item, the second, the third, the fourth. And so then there becomes quite a few number of gaps in the actual grid. And that's because it's following the HTML structure exactly. So instead, I don't really care if the items fall in numerical order. If there's a gap and another element could fill that gap, I'd rather it just go into this place than go directly behind the element in front of it. So I'm going back up to my grid area and beneath grid auto rows, I'm going to add another property here. I'm going to write grid auto flow, which will basically indicate how I want this grid to flow on the page and I'm going to set the grid auto flow to dense, which basically means I want each grid item to take up space where it can, regardless of the HTML structure. So instead, now the grid doesn't have to follow the exact structure of the HTML. Instead, the images can go wherever they fit. So if I increase or decrease the size, the actual order of the images changes. The last thing I'm going to do is add a different color to the background so that way the images pop a little bit more. So I'm going to set a background color to the body element. And with this, you can really vary the way that the page looks by just modifying the grid rows and the columns. So instead, if I go in here and I modify something else, it will dramatically change the way the content looks on the page. So there you go, that's how I created this responsive photo gallery using only HTML and CSS. 
please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.